Hi, hey family. Welcome back to the Explore the Extraordinary podcast. My name is Betty Guadagno, and today I'm joined by Susie. Susie is a near-death experiencer. She's an author. She's recently written a book called Three Weeks to Live, and I'm super grateful for your willingness to come on and serve our community and share about your experience, Susie. So I'm going to toss it right over to you. Thanks so much, Betty. Lovely to be here and to talk to this wonderful community. So I had... Um... Yeah, it was an experience that has changed my life. I I look at it as there was before this happened, the NDE happened, and after. Uh, It was an extraordinary mm, happening in my life and has really allowed me to transform who I am and how I understand the world and and what I believe life is about now. I live life quite differently. So I um, was living on the island of Ibiza and... um, while I was here, I was sort of, I, I was meeting my neighbor um, to see her regularly um, for um, coffee about every every few days. One day I showed up really late and she said, where have you been? Where? And I said, I forgot how to get here. She said, you have been acting strangely. I need to get you checked out. So I went to with her to see a bioresonance practitioner and they identified there was something wrong with my brain. And I was bundled into her car and I wasn't keen to go to hospital, but she made me. And it transpired that I had a a huge brain tumor and I was given three weeks to live. Uh, I'm a meditator. So I thought to myself, I'm also a mom, a single mom. And I thought, I I have to get through this. It's not my time to go. I knew deep down it was not my time. And I sat on the edge of my bed. I was in hospital at this point. I was being invited to have chemotherapy and all sorts of treatments that I really didn't want to have. And I sat on the edge of the bed in the hospital and um, had this feeling. I thought, I'm going to die today. So I went over to the nurse's station, wonderful nurses there early one morning. And, I, and they said, hey, Suze, what, what, what's up? What's happening? I said, well, I just want to let you know that I'm going to die today. I feel I'm going to die today. And I'd like you to keep an extra special eye on me. And they said, you're fine, we've got you covered and so on. So I said, okay, thanks, but just check on me regularly. And I said, of course you will. I went back to my bed, sat on the bed and started to meditate. And then I felt this extraordinary thing happening in my body. It was like my spirit was being pulled up through my body, through the crown of my head. It was like I had a big sort of vacuum cleaner on my head, sucking my spirit out of my body. And I felt this whoosh, this gaseous whoosh. It was like a gas. And I felt my spirit leave my body. And at that moment, I found myself traveling through this. It was like outer space. It was stars and like night. It was like a sky. It was beautiful. And I went to heaven, what I call heaven, what I would call heaven, and um, experienced this being out of my body. And I was looking back down and I could see Uh, that I was no longer in my body and that I was no longer the old Susie that I once knew. I was something else traveling through this experience. And it was all very uh, difficult to pin down, difficult to comprehend what was going on. I had never heard of a near-death experience at this point. Uh, It was only afterwards that I began to read up and find out about it. I found myself out of my body and I felt myself free and I was given a clear choice um, after I sort of been floating around as it were uh, did I want to come back into my body or do I want to stay here in this infinite space and this infinite space I'm referring to is gorgeous there was no sadness no house bills no troubles it was just heavenly and I immediately thought to myself and set the intention I need to go back into my body I'm a mom I have a a young child who really depends upon me this is not my time so when I set this intention there was a white flash of light and I was sent back into my body and there I was back back in and I had a scan, a brain scan at that point, and I was in um, Cambridge University Hospital in the UK, in England. <clears throat> I had a scan and the doctor came in with the results um, shortly afterwards. 
and he he's a very experienced oncologist and he said we don't understand this result but it's completely gone what you had is completely gone there's no scar tissue which is really surprising and you are completely healed and i have never seen anything like this before and he said, it looks like a miracle, although we're not in the business of miracles. And I said, well, that's interesting because I am. I'd always had an interest in the supernatural and being able to create incredible things. And I, I always knew that our mind is incredibly powerful. So I had to manage everyone else's shock at this. <laughs> I wasn't shocked at all that I got through. Uh, and what I came back when I came back I realized I have completely different operating software. My, my my mental software had changed. I see the world differently. And I did from the moment I came back. I saw this expansive view of the world. I saw that we're all one. I, I saw that we all belong, belong to one community. And I saw that um, the important thing about life is compassion and love and kindness and doing good things. And to know that we are empowered to, we're meant to be living a creative, wonderful, harmonious, positive life, um, which of course is, is, is not what many of us are observing in the world right now. Um, I began to see things differently. I wanted, um, I have a different relationship with myself in the world. I have a different relationship with my friends and close loved ones. And everything changed in that moment. And at, at that point, I began looking at uh, what this phenomenon was about. And I began to discover things uh, under the title of near-death experience. And, and I, I saw that when people have crisis moments, this can happen where the body somehow gets um, disconnected with the spirit. But I... I came back with no fear. I have no fear. I have no fear of dying and I have no fear of living. There is nothing to fear because everything is taken care of at the highest level. Um, I had always lived a spiritual life. I believed that there was a, a bigger force at work than ourselves than we can see in the visible world. And that hasn't changed. It's just strengthened. I now absolutely know that we are looked after uh, in a way by a much bigger force than we can possibly imagine. And that if we open our hearts and open ourselves to receive good things in this life, then then we can operate in that way. And I, I, that is what I'm trying to do now. Um, my life changed completely. And with this complete healing, I realized that I had to kind of start over. Um, when I got back from hospital, uh, I lived in a forest, in a lovely house in a forest, miles away from anywhere. And I got back and I'd been in hospital for quite a few months and away from my island, my home for quite a few months. So I came back and it was Christmas time and I went to see some friends for some Christmas drinks and they wanted to welcome me back. And as I went home, I went to the went down the drive and uh, we could see that there was billows of smoke coming out of the house. The house was on fire and the house burned down the night I arrived back. And it was too dangerous to go in in the evening. Um, and it was, the fire was on all night and everything was burnt to a cinder. The next morning I went in to the house and there was my tarot card deck with one card still intact it hadn't been burnt it was the only thing that didn't get burnt and it was the rebirth card so if I didn't already know what this fire was all about this card was clearly telling me this is a rebirth situation it's up to you now to reset restyle the way you do your life and I was also as I was going into the final scan I had this angelic golden orb come in to the room and I got very clearly the information you're to write a book about this you're to spend your life now communicating about this and expressing and and and, and saying what it's like to leave the body and, and what the other side is like and that there will be a film as well uh, just completed the book and um, I have an agent in LA who's working on a film 
treatment for this. So I, I hope that to be able to follow my mission now, which is talking about these extraordinary events and what this has taught me, what dying and leaving my body has taught me about living. Thanks so much for sharing, Susie. Incredible, incredible story. I'm wondering something that came up for me because, you know, as experiencers, it's very, it seems like it's very simple for us to be like, just have positive thoughts and live a happy life. But for some people, they're really perceiving that they're suffering inside of their human experience. They're dealing with poverty or homelessness or abuse. And so I'm wondering, what would you say to that population of people? Yeah, I acknowledge I acknowledge that completely. I myself was homeless for quite a few months after this house experience. And I was lucky that I live in, in a community where everyone lent in and lent me houses and lent me clothes and some money and so on. So I was lucky to get through. I think as humans, is a very the human condition is a very interesting and difficult and challenging um, experience. Being a human is tricky. Everyone you speak to who's a human, uh, when you start digging under their lives, it, it, they've had uh, varying degrees of difficulty. Many people have extraordinary difficulty um, and terrible storylines to deal with. I mean, if we pick up the papers, I choose not to look at the news, but if we did, we, we would be blasted with all of these horrendous things that are happening around the world in various regions. So I acknowledge that it's not about la di da, just think positive thoughts. No, it is we experience storylines that are very difficult. And I believe that these storylines are sent to um, inform us, teach us and give us lessons that we're here in this lifetime to learn. People say to me, I'm so sorry to hear that you had brain cancer and it was so heavy. And I said, it was the greatest gift on one level. Yeah. You could say, I'm really sorry to hear that. And I, you know, sorry you had to go through that. But through going through that, my levels of understanding and wisdom and information about the world and being present in the world, I would choose to go through it again, even though it was difficult and hard and people around me were just falling to pieces thinking that I'd gone, I'd gone or I was going. Um, I think we we have to go through ups and downs to experience we have to experience the light and the shade in order to be fulfilled and fulfill our mission as humans. None of us know what soul contracts we signed to come here, what what level of difficulty we've signed up to 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 allow us to learn. But I, I do believe that there is um, value in all things, storylines, good and bad. There's great value. There's a lot to learn. And it makes us, it gives us the material from which to live extraordinary lives if we choose to and to help others. I'm now, if anyone comes to me who needs help, I'm there. I mean, I get a lot of incoming from people who have had, who are going through cancer or people close to them are going through cancer. And they want to know, what do you do? What did you do? What have you got to share? And I will always spend time and help people because I know that that's why I went through this to be able to share and help other people experience these things and, and handle these things you know I had very um, specific protocols around uh, negative talk I wouldn't let people around my bed talk about the doctors particularly were very keen on giving me bad inf you know difficult harsh information you're going to die I'm like whoa please Let's change this. I actually had to really say, let's change this language. I don't want to be told that and inform myself that's what's happening. I don't believe that. And my family was like, God, she's in denial. She's, you know, I was driving everyone mad because I insisted upon positive language and talking and thinking and feeling and expressing in terms of what I wanted to create. I'd previously written a book on manifesting and the power of our thoughts and, and, so I was very, um, I'd read a lot and I'd, I'd understood a lot about this thing. And I know that was really infuriating to people who around me who thought I was dying and I was just missing, missing the point. I wasn't missing the point, but I was 
I was on such a high frequency and such a high level from coming back from this spiritual transformation and this catalyst of change that I could just see the enormous power that our consciousness has. Our consciousness is the most powerful thing in the universe. Growing up as kids in schools, we're not taught how to harness it. We're taught crazy facts that we probably never need to know, but we're not taught in most cases how to manage and work with this incredible supercomputer that we all have between our ears. It is incredible, the power we have. And I just wish, my wish for the world is that we learn how to harness our consciousness. We learn how to have compassion and kindness for each other and make sure that we... Um, we, we have good intentions. Talking about intentions, one particular thing that I found, I was shown very, very clearly, when you set an intention, the universe kicks in and makes it happen immediately or contrives to try and make, assuming there's no belief systems or programs that block it, um, that's a big assumption, of course. But essentially, when I decided I want to come back in my body, I just thought it and immediately there was this flash and I was back in. So I would just say, careful what you think about, careful what you speak about, and just um, really monitor and, and be aware of the power of the word, the power of thoughts and so on, because it, it, they really, really are powerful. And I don't want this to get misconstrued around, well, you know, she how can you explain wars and everything i i know it's a very complicated topic and i know that the area of mm, uh all of the insane war that i don't i can't understand why we have war or leaders that allow war i just don't understand how this can be allowed ever um but there are very it's a very complex situation. And when you talk about it and, and pull down the pieces into the bare, the bare elements, it, it, it's easy for, um, for confusion to happen and upset to happen. So I have to be very careful about how I talk about these things because it can trigger many people, which I understand. All I know is that there is this big force that is there and it responds to what happens with our consciousness and how we manage our consciousness. And there is a collective consciousness and an individual consciousness, it seems to me. So we can operate on the individual level and create certain things on the individual level. And in addition, there is this massive collective consciousness that is the all powerful um, switch. And we are all part of this story of, of the overall consciousness that's going on at this time in in in, in space time and, and it's always been like this thanks for that reflection i'm curious since you were saying that you were really into manifesting and you know about the power of thoughts what kind of story came into your mind when you were diagnosed i mean you're doing all the right things you're thinking all the right things you're taking all the right actions and here you are, and you've been thrown this, you know, total curveball. And I'm wondering what your thought process was like around that. Ooh. It was acceptance. You know, I had a young child. I didn't want to leave him on his own. So it was at one level, it was, oh, my goodness, I, you know, I don't want to die. Um, I like it here. But on another level, I was, this is my storyline. And I was quite, people thought I was mad. And I had to be careful not to appear as mad while I was going through my illness because I was permanently very high, very chatty, very upbeat. And people kept saying she doesn't realize how much trouble she's in. I did. But I just knew that I was OK. Everything's always OK. You know, we are we are here on. a. For me, it's a blueprint that we're playing out and. I just had trust. I had trust and faith that the right thing was going to happen for me. And it so happened that I I was told, you know, as I was going to the scan, you're a writer. I asked, please, God, why I called I call this big force God. It doesn't matter what we call it. It's not religion. But I was asking, why is this happening to me? And, and the answer I got was, 
because you're an author with a big platform and an opportunity to communicate to people. We want to, you know, this is experience for you to write about and talk about to give people a bigger perspective of life. I no longer, if someone comes to me and goes, I'm dying or my loved one is dying, I can't say I'm so sorry because it's a beautiful, beautiful space that people are going to when they leave their bodies. It's divine. There is nothing to feel sad about this other than the fact that we miss them. But anyone now who leaves, <laughs> excuse me, I can no longer say I'm really sorry because I know it's a good, beautiful thing. Okay. So I'm wondering if maybe you can talk a little bit about why do you think that this happens to some people? Like we were just discussing, some people come to you and they say, my loved one is dying and we can't will these experiences on people. But why do you think that some people have near-death experiences and some people don't? Hmm. Well, it's like it, life is this colorful tapestry and pattern. All of our lives are completely different. No one has ever lived the life that I lived or the life that you've lived. It's a complete unique blueprint. So I think in our lifetimes, we experience all sorts of different flavors. Some people have terrible relationships, terrible money problems, um, trauma in the home. All sorts of things can happen. And it will happen to one person, not to another. I have no idea what the legislation for that looks like or how that's all worked out. It just seems apparent that that, that is. Some people have lucky lives. Some people have unlucky lives. I, I don't really know, and I couldn't say how or why. Um, my hunch is that we we get what we need to learn. We get happening to us the the, the, the things that we've come down into this lifetime to, to to know about and I speak about lifetimes because I do believe we have more than one <clears throat> I can't believe that this is the one and only I just don't believe that but I have no uh, reference points for being able to explain why or is that true I don't know but this is my feeling thank you for that and I'm wondering about your connection to the divine now that you've had this experience and you're sharing about it do you perceive that you have relationships with spirit guides is it with source itself yeah i do i have strengthened my i was always feeling like um a close sense of of of, of uh, my spiritual self i've meditated and prayed for many years <clears throat> now i have very strong intuition i can muscle check to see if I should do something or not do something or if this is right or this is wrong or get advice about the way I should proceed with things and I learned the system in theta healing about muscle testing for getting a yes or a no a very clear one based on <clears throat> the cellular and the body so I use that a lot I have extremely strong intuition and I have developed I've always been uh I've always had a sort of sense of being quite uh, psychic, but that has really increased since this happened. I have a much stronger sense of the realm beyond what we can see, the invisible realms, and a very strong sense of other realms. And I, when I was going into the scanner with this golden orb that arrived with these angels, that was my clearest experience of having other beings around and, and being told stuff at a from a much higher level <clears throat> I didn't question what these angels told me I knew it was my truth it might not have been someone else's truth but for me it was so I have developed a very strong sense of a spiritual aspect in my life and every day I walk in nature I listen to the birds I pray I send good intentions to people I know who need help and so on. I do. I spend a lot of my time uh, in gratitude, in appreciation and asking for good things to happen. I think this is my duty now, having been through all of this and being allowed to come out and being allowed to 
live my life and heal so that I could spend time with my beautiful son, which is my big wish. And I was granted it. So I, I feel I have to give, I want to give back and, and balance things a little on the spiritual realms. Yeah, thank you for that. You hear so many experiencers say that being of service in some way is what they come back with this, you know, strong pull to do. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. I'm curious if you feel like everybody has access to angels and guides. And if you do, uh, are there, do you have any quick tips for people who are looking to connect in that way? I think the other realms are, are very keen to connect with us. There's nothing special about my faculties other than the fact that I've been out of my body and come back. I'm ordinary and we're all human beings. We're all have the same kind of structures within ourselves for perception. Some of us have stronger perceptive abilities and others for sure and I think it's something that we can enhance and develop as we go through life if we wish to um, some people have a natural uh, ability to have these kind of sensations um, others have to try harder and it's not so uh, obvious but I think I think it, it's it feels to me like we are it's easy to forget that we are spiritual beings in a physical body. And I try and bring myself back to that position regularly to say to myself, I, this is not about the material things. This is not, even though life is very convincing in that way. And people talk about oh, what's your job? What's your success? What's your family situation? And, and people will judge and make assessments on that basis. It's very easy to forget that we are, incredibly sophisticated spiritual beings and that we can communicate in the other other levels so so profoundly and so deeply and get incredible information for me there's nothing more interesting and fascinating than being able to tap into these other worlds how fantastical that is people watch movies to get out of their realities and things I'd like to just choose to get out of my reality when I want to. And I do, you know, I, I really love that. I live on the island of Ibiza. And this is a place of hippies and dancing and celebration of life. And there's lots of people taking plant medicines and ayahuasca and doing all sorts of things to enhance their creativity, enhance their experiences and to give them spiritual uh, inputs. So this is probably one of the most um, busy places in the world as far as it's one of the very deep places for doing these kind of things. So I guess it's not surprising that I, I see this and I come up across this quite a lot. So there's no big thing, but I see that sound healing is becoming uh, understood now. I see that meditation retreats, the importance of wellness, the importance of nutrition, uh, eating organic local food, all of these things are just becoming so much more widespread and, and people's understanding and interest in these things is is much more um uh much more expansive than it, it's ever been so i think we're in very interesting times with that in that respect wow thank you for that yeah i i i off i love that i love that you're talking about that the place that you physically are is very heightened spiritually there's lots of places that aren't, but also at the same time, you, your energy can heighten, uh, you know, the energy of, of the town that you live in or the city that you live in. I once had a spiritual mentor that told me that you can be the thermostat or you can be the thermometer. So I set the tone of where yeah, I am. Yeah. And I chose to move here from the city. I was London UK based for, for a long time and UK has its own beautiful deep heritage um, I connect in with a lot of the Druidry uh, circles and, and looking at trees and nature and the power of nature I love all that but I did choose to come to this island it, it called me and I, I wanted to be around like-minded people where I could talk about consciousness and expansion and all of these kind of things without being considered a, a crazy a crazy person 
I love that. Yeah. I live in New York city. Uh, so not necessarily super spiritually inclined, lots of buildings, not a lot of nature. And I recently went to Los Angeles and everybody was talking about source and gratitude. And I was like, Oh, may maybe I live in the wrong part of the world. Uh, but yeah, I, I do love the, you know, a city has its own energy too. And I feel like my energy is needed here. Another yeah. question came up for me while you were sharing your story. And that was, because you experienced a spontaneous healing. And I'm wondering if you've had any other perceived health challenges since your healing. Um, have I? <clears throat> no, actually, I've been really well. And I, I believe now I can, I've got this uh, sense, I can really heal most things in my body now um, by um, some metaphysical technique and going inside and I've been trained in Reiki, I've been trained in theta healing and hypnosis, and I use a lot of these kind of tools. If I have anything that I want to fix, let's say, I will use my mind power as much as possible. It's interesting because at the moment I have cataract in this eye, which is causing blurred vision. And I was speaking with the girl I work with regularly uh, yesterday, and I say, can we do some downloads and some reprogramming to get this eye fixed without me having to have eye surgery? So um, part of me believes that I can just fix stuff and heal it. This is going to be a challenge because it's my eye and it's not an easy, it's not like just healing a little wound on the side of, you know, something I might have scratched or something. This, that will be quite a big success. But I guess I've done it with brain cancer. <laughs> and um, so who knows? I, I do believe that we can heal most things ourselves. And if we can't heal, then there's something we need to learn. And we looked at the... Um, spiritual significance of this eye and it's about being able to see the future and sense the future and so on so I, I think I need to do some work around that wow I I t you are speaking my language yeah I'm really happy to hear I'm not the only person who thinks that way <laughs> but there's some sort of yeah I'm always googling what is this and, and you know what I think this will not be unusual thinking in 10 20 years time Totally we're agree. really we're really going through a renaissance of of beliefs and uh, awareness around what we're capable of as human beings, and and that's why there's such <laughs> such an amazing awareness now. I'll give you a good example. Twelve years ago, I wrote a book on manifesting called Instructions for Happiness. It's the best book I've ever written, and that was twelve years ago. No one had even no one talked about manifesting then. And I've just been asked to re-release that book. I'm going to update it slightly, but it's going to be re-released in a big way because the thinking has moved on in 12 years. Now everyone wants to understand and have a handbook on how to do manifesting. And it's suddenly become a really hot topic. So I think these kind of themes and ideas and ways of thinking have their time. And that book was ahead of its time. And now it's on time. So I think... Yeah, we, we just see different ways of thinking coming along. And then that's exciting. I love that. And remaining open-minded that things yeah. could shift. You know, you wrote a book and maybe it didn't have the level of success or it wasn't received the way that you were initially intending. Now you have another opportunity to do it again. Yeah. Yeah. That's remaining open-minded to the universe yeah. presenting us with new opportunities. I love hearing that. So yes. I've really enjoyed our time together today. I just want to see if there's anything else that you'd like to share to feel more complete about this time. I feel like I've I've shared a lot. <clears throat> and I just, I really, I think if it's one thing I want to share with, with people for me having gone through this is that you don't need to fear life. You don't need to have fear about life being over or someone close to you's life being over. There is nothing to worry about. And if we go headlong into realizing that we're here and we're meant to be having a good time, we're meant to be being kind to each other and we're meant to be having fun, most importantly. And we've kind of, we're forgetting that because of the stresses of day-to-day of -day life. So I think simplify, try and surround yourself or not try, surround yourself with really good people and expect good things. That's what I'd like to share. Beautiful way of closing. Susie, thank you again for your service to our community. And thank we'll see you, you next time. See you next time. Thank you so much.